So sometimes when you do rollover, when rollover takes place, you'll see a gap in data. And a lot of times that happens on the current day that you're trading. Okay, for instance, this is 818, like on a Monday. So there's two things I like to do. The first step that I'll do to fix this, to get rid of this gap in data, first I want to have a full trading day that I choose. I don't want to have it happen like on a Monday. I don't want it to be on the current day. I want it to be on the previous full trading day. So I'm going to go over here to Tools, Instrument Manager, and I'm going to click on CL. I'm going to search CL. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click Edit. And then I'm going to go under Miscellaneous, scroll on down to the bottom where it defines the contract months, and then find my current contract, which is 1014. I'm going to click on 1014, and I'm going to change the rollover date to the previous day's full trading day. So Sunday was a trading day, but it wasn't a full trading day. I'm going to change it to the 15th. And I'm going to click OK, and then OK, and then OK. Now, I'm going to bring up my chart on oil, and I'm going to reload my historical data. And here's what we're going to see. We're going to see that there is an offset there, and that offset will be now on the 15th instead of the 18th. Well, that doesn't help us. We still have that big offset. And then we're going to write down the prices. So we got 94.75 and we got 94.26 right there, like the last quote and then the next quote. You'll see where that gap is between the gap. So I captured that. That was a change of 49 cents. The front month, 1014, is not going to change because that's what 1014 is. It's not adjusting your current month. It's adjusting your previous months. And it's saying, hey, the front month is 90 cents lower than the previous month but the really or sorry it's, yeah 90 cents lower but really it's actually even more low than that it's more than 90 cents lower because if it had that difference it'd be easier so we found that there's a 49 cent difference between this close and this close so if there is a 49 cent difference then i need it to be 49 cents i need the back month to not just be 90 cents lower i need it to be a buck 39 90 plus 49 cents so i need it to be a buck 39 lower so i'm going to go back on over I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to go to Instrument Manager. Again, I'm going to pull up CL. And remember, it said it was 90 cents lower, but we found that there was still it was still 49 cents lower, and so I don't want it to be anything lower, right? So we're going to go down here to the very bottom. We're going to choose our 1014 contract, and we're going to make this a buck 39. So 90 cents plus 49 cents. And then click OK, OK, and OK. And now, let's just bring up the chart. Let's reload all the data. And once that's loaded up, we can go back and we can look at the 18th, the 17th, and now we got the 15th. And notice we no longer have that gap in data. OK? So we had to figure out how much higher was it. it was 49 cents higher. So let's go ahead and bring it down 49 more cents. That's why we wanted a buck 39. We already brought it down 90 cents, but we needed to bring it down a buck and 39 cents. So we added that 49 cents to the 90 cents. We have a buck 39 negative adjustment. And that's the difference between September's contract and October's contract as of midnight was a buck 39. And that's why you can't just use settlements because we're looking at the midnight price because for whatever reason, that's when the system rolls it over. And that's how you can adjust the gaps on a rollover whenever you see a, ga a gap in data, which can mess up your charts. So it's real easy to look at. Just got to figure out that difference and either you add it or subtract it to the number that's already in there. It'd be good to go and also set it back one day so that way you have it on a full trading day before the current trading day. And you should be able to get it fixed. If you have any questions, let me know.